Thank you. Yeah, cool. I didn't expect so many people in the last session. Maybe you're more here because you want to watch the fire, but uh, I tried to do my best to attract you to, to what I'm talking here about. Uh, the second really cool thing is, um, in the opposite of my other talk, where I said you can ask anything but no technical questions, you can do it today because he is one of the core developers of what I'm showing here. So just ask him, not me. Um, yeah, I'm talking about um, Shagoon GeoServer QGIS integration. And um, this is about more or less about two projects we run in our company. And um, of course, I want to take the opportunity to show you just another web mapping framework. But of course, it's the most famous and best. I'm sure you never heard about Shagoon, or whoever heard about Shagoon up yet. Oh, uh, quite a few. Cool. Um, yeah, I talk a little bit about, yeah, maybe a short introduction myself. What is the motivation? I give you a really short overview about the involved components. So I marked Chagoon in that thick uh, letters because maybe that takes a little bit more time. I'm not going to introduce you to QGIS or stuff like that. I could ask whoever had contact with QGIS. Raise your hands. Oh. I expected every hand. Um, yeah, and then I have a, a look at the QGIS Shagoon editor, which is actually a plugin in QGIS to manage Shagoon stuff. And then I give you a short outlook of what is planned the next time. So just, um, yeah, that's me. And um, I was founder of Company of Terrestris, who I'm representing here. It was founded in 2002. So we are doing this open source web mapping stuff quite a long time. And uh, yeah, it's boring only to have one company. So we found another one in 215, which is more related to data analysis stuff, remote sensing, and so on. It's, um, I think a lo lot of people know Marcus Nittler. He's one of the shareholders. So it's a lot of stuff done, done in grass and so on. Um, yeah, I had the honor to chair the last European global conference in Bonn. And um, yeah, I'm happy that I don't have the work now. So I'm just going to be here. And uh, yeah, mainly I work as consultant or agile coach, stuff like that. So I'm not definitely not a developer. That's what I want to say. Um, yeah, just a quick view on terrestrials. This is not the not not real story because this is a mixed up between the terrestrials and the mondialis guys. But there are quite a few in the, in, in the time. And the message message to you is just really absolutely cool team and cool people who write the software I'm going to present here. So what was the, the motivation? We work mainly on the Shagoon framework roughly about 2011, which is, uh, yeah, it's eight years now. It started with a big project we had. We, we, we still work a little bit with that project. And um, since then, Shagoon is really used in most of our projects. So it's a web mapping framework base we introduce to, to our customers. And many of these customers also use QGIS. <coughs> And um, yeah, I think that QGIS is presumably the most worldwide used desktop GS. I, I hope nobody from ESRI is here. They may complain, and maybe they are right when they say ArcGIS is more used. But from what I get, it's QGIS. And um, there was an idea to combine QGIS and Shagoon. Um, I formulated that on a talk on FOSTRIS, which is a local conference uh, from local German-speaking chapter in 2018. And there was all re requests from our customers who said, hey, we are using QGIS and we want to publish the QGIS data in your web mapping framework. So that was um, the motivation. And of course, we want to have the same data and same data services in desktop GIS and in the web GIS world. And um, yeah, I don't know which is, in, in Germany, the concept is very often you talk about kind of power users. These are the users who work on the desktop GIS to great, generate new data and stuff like that. And we wanted to give them a tool um, to directly publish the data they created into uh, the web. So that's basically the idea. You have several QGIS desktop installations. People create data and then just directly can push it to Shagoon in the in the web or in the internet of their organization. And um, yeah, as you will see in a few minutes, we use um, not QGS server, we use GeoServer in the backend. 
And um, that time, in, you still have to edit the SLDs manually. So we could make use of the <coughs> SLD writer from QGIS to put things over to, um, to GeoServer. So just, yeah, you know, QGIS, I think it's, it's mostly new. Um, the most important thing is it's functional extendable via plugins. So that makes it quite easy to put something in there. Um, yeah, GeoServer is our backend. It's also heavily um, used in the Shagoon framework. So that was more or less set for us not to switch to another WMS server. I'm, I'm sorry about that, Marco. Um, yeah, it's also widely used in the, in the GIS world. So that was more or less clear that we go uh, continue using GeoServer. And then we have um, Shagoon, which is an open source web GIS framework. I think I will show the, oh no, you see it there, GitHub com, terrestrial Shagoon. So you get all the stuff there. Since few weeks, you also can download the Dockerized environment, which directly with Docker app installs you Shagoon and GeoServer, GeoNetwork, all the stuff. I'm going to show the architecture on the next slide. And we make use of, um, Geo server, geo data services. So we're not serving the data directly out of Shagoon. We use geo server to um, uh, to serve the data, and then we have uh, open layers as base of our client lib. To be honest, I must say make use of our client libs because we have two of them. One is geo ext related, and one is React JS related. So yeah, I was asked for the introduction how to spell Shagoon. It's ter maybe you think about this Japanese night. Uh, it's not. It's just an acronym uh, out of the components it's made of. It's Spring, Hibernate, Open Layers, GeoServer. So that leads you to shock. And then we are from Rhineland in, in, in Germany. So we have kind of dialect there. And in German for and, you say und. And in our dialect, you say un. Un yet. So, and something else. So they're even more in modules integrated. So, and that's basically what it is. So we have something we, we call the Shagoon Core, which is mainly implemented in Java, and which um, serves out different clients. As I said before, we have two um, different client libraries. You can administer via a uh, backend surface. I'm going to show you some screenshots. And below that, we have GeoServer, Geo network for the metadata, and we use Mapfish print and have to write these ugly long uh, configuration files for the print servlet. Um, but that works quite well together. And Shigun also functions a little bit as a proxy here, so it saves up the services which are below there. And um, yeah, what we want to do is um, to integrate Q uh, QGIS here. And uh, normally I wanted to show you some Shagoon stuff in the backend live, but um, I was not allowed to use my own laptop, so I did some screenshots. So I logged in into the Shagoon um, backend, and you, you can see here you have several instances you can administer here, like applications, so you can do as many applications as you want to, and something which is administration of layers, so there you get the layers out of GeoServer, and you can administer and determine their behavior in the framework here. Um, we have something cool implemented in here, so I have a screenshot on that later, so I'm going to talk on that. So maybe I concentrate on the applications first, so you can create applications, you can copy existing applications, they are listed up here, so in the moment it's just new installation on my Laptop only one, you can edit the applications and then you can open them in the GeoXT or in the um, rec based uh, version. When administering it, you can determine which functionality will be included in the client. Um, you can determine the initial extent, you can build your own tree, which is presented in the uh, web mapping client just by drag and drop the layers which are in your Shagoon um, um, installation. Uh, you can set up some permissions to users or user groups who can view the client, so that's fully integrated. It's also possible to connect that to um, LDAP or some other libraries, but this is more, it's not a plugin, it's just 
really programming stuff in the moment still. Um, yeah, but you can save up all your applications within uh, the Shagoon stuff. And um, yeah, you can really rudimentary work on your style, but this is, I think it makes more sense to do it directly in the CSS, in the code. And this is just a short start to give users better opportunities to do that here. Yeah, this is about layers, so you have a layer list, you can also edit the layers, download, have a kind of preview uh, window for your layers which are in your system. And this is quite cool because um, it allows you to write your own plugins. So you can just directly write your code in here. It's syntax checked, so you can write your own um, graphical user interfaces for your special functionality. And you can connect it to server-side WPS processes. So you write your own user interface and then push the, what the user does down to a WPS, require back the data and do something in the client with that. So this is a quite cool concept which was requested by a customer who didn't want to explain <laughs> hydrological modeling to us. He said we just need an interface where we can do it on our own. And um, yeah, that's quite a cool thing because that gives you all the power just to use the base Shagoon installation and then to install your or develop your own plugins. Yeah, and then we have the user user rights group stuff like that. So that's all about Shagoon in in the moment. Um, what I want to show you here, um, just some some examples how it could look like. This is a project we recently finished uh, during the year. Um, I heard something somebody telling me today uh, there couldn't be enough geo portals in a country, so at least you need hundreds of them. So every city in Germany needs its own geo portal, and this was uh, Koblenz, which is quite just 100 kilometers away from Bonn. And we built that open geo portal, which is partly used open, partly it is uh, just for the administration things. So they have several clients with several contact, uh, contents, uh, stuff like that. And for you, the good thing is if you go on the slides, I'll, I linked it here so you can directly access it because it's open in the internet. But I'm not going to show it here. This is just another example where we use it and you can see that you also can do really complex printouts on, on here. This is a client for a project which was presented yesterday by a friend of mine from Deutsche Telekom AG connected to their fiber planning stuff. So it's even quite a flex flexible way you can like, you just can use it. Okay, so that's, you know now a little bit more about Chagoon. Uh, as I said, just another web mapping framework. I think every, a lot of companies tend to use something like GeoServer, OpenLayers, standardized stuff, and then they build their own web mapping framework on top and, and use that. I, I didn't see really much um, correlation or yeah, combination of companies who really develop on the same web mapping framework. So QGIS Shagoon Editor um, is a is a plugin in QGIS um, and it allows you to manage Shagoon configurations. So basically you can do the same via QGIS what I showed you on the um, screenshot surfaces uh, minutes ago. Um, the version 2 plugin is available in the official QGIS plugin repository. The plugin for 3 is not there yet. Um, y you know, everybody tends to make new releases towards Phos4G, but we failed, so there are still some bugs. It doesn't work properly in the moment. Maybe, maybe it does now, but I didn't dare to, to, to update it. So it's not there yet, but it's, it's, it's definitely in work. Um, and what you can do is um, you can add layers from Shagoon to QGIS via WFS and WMS, which is not really fancy because you, you can do it if you connect to GeoServer anyway. Um, but which is really interesting, you can create new layers. There's also a possibility in Shagoon to upload data files and publish them via GeoServer as a new layer. But now you can do it just by using your QGIS layer, style of the layer in QGIS, and then you push it over to Shagoon, and from Shagoon it's pushed over to GeoServer. And it's all done by API calls. 
So you can style your Shagoon layer. You can also use it to style existing layers which are already in your Shagoon or GeoServer application and then bring them to QGIS, style them there and from there we've write it out. The QGIS style is written out as SLD and then ported back to, to GeoServer. All in, uh, in QGIS. Yeah, you also can edit Shagoon applications, you can create new applications and stuff like that. So what I showed you. Um, yeah, some things are not in there yet. I don't know whether I have it on, on the slide somewhere, but I can talk on that later. So that's what it basically looks like. You have your QGIS and you have your loaded um, plugin here, which is just one single button that opens the login dialog, which is the same login you use when you access Shagoon directly via the web. And then you get your connections. You can name your connections, so you can handle several connections if you want to here. And then you see listed the applications and the, the layers here. So this is, if you look at the layers, it's more or less the same on the web interface and in the, in the um, QGIS interface. And then you can open the applications, so some basic screenshots of the two clients here. Um, and uh, yeah, which is really a cool uh, thing to do is so you can you act, add your QGIS layer to, to Shagoon. So you have any layer in here, which is a railway network for North Rhine Westphalia, which is around Bonn, the, the country in Germany. You see these blue lines over here, which are styled in your QGIS. And on the plugin side, you just say, okay, upload layer to Shagoon, and it will automatically detect all the layers which are over here, which are not yet in your, in your Shagoon. And then you select your layer, and then you say upload layer. And if everything with all the Python binding stuff works well, which does not in the moment, um, it comes over. And then you have the layer over here, which is automatically updated in your Shagoon interface. And if you then go back to the Shagoon web interface, you see there is one new layer. And if you look at the preview, it's, um, it's just taken over there. So that works normally quite well. As I said, for QGIS, we have some, some minor problems here. OK, so of course, what we do have to do is we need a bug-free release for 1.0 for the 3 version, which is coming very, very soon. In the moment, there are some, some minor bugs, some minor problems. It's somehow, sometimes it works, sometimes not. On my desktop, it doesn't work. So um, I don't know. I'm not a developer. And um, yeah, maybe we go over to support further or all Shigun uh, configurations, like user permission, stuff like that, which is not implemented in the moment. It's more like a yeah, better showcase, I would, I would say. And of course, we would like to have support for font symbolization. And um, there was quite a small discussion. I had a talk on a software we did uh, also, which is called GeoStyler. I presented it two days ago. And there was quite a nice discussion about the QGIS SLD parser, which is, as far as I know, but maybe I'm wrong and uh, Marco could correct me, is not 100% now in, in QGIS related to, to all SLD outputs. I know there was a lot of work done in the past weeks, but so maybe there's something to do to get better transformation from the QGIS styles over to SLD. One idea was maybe GeoStyler, I mentioned it, may help here a little bit so we can transform the QGIS style via GeoStyler to, to SLD. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, in general, I think the message is quite cool. Open source is combinable, so two complete different worlds: desktop JS, web map, uh, web JS on the other side. And we just talk about APIs, API calls, and then you can do it all. And the plugin shows also how to set up a comprehensive GDI with QGIS desktop and the Shagoon web JS framework. So as an alternative, maybe for what Marco presented minutes ago or in the, in the talk before. And yeah, 
So, thank you. That's the story about. You know that Shogun is already taken in the open source community and it's already trademarked as a machine learning framework. So maybe you should change your name. Um, yeah, I've, I've seen something like that, but. Ah, okay. So you, you think before we really go out being really famous, we should think about our name. <laughs> So maybe we just have to replace one com component and then it's not Shogun, it's Shofun or whatever. Uh, thanks for the note. Uh, yeah. <coughs> uh, thank you, a very excellent presentation. And uh, as you know, there are also a very popular uh, Geo uh, web solution called the GeoNode. So why don't you try to connect the QGIS into the GeoNode stack. Is it a good idea or what? I think it's definitely a good idea, but we as our company, all of our customers, and we have quite a few of them, which are big administrations in Germany, huge companies, they use Shagoon and not GeoNode. So that was the thing when we started actually to develop Shagoon in 2011. I think there was already something like GeoNode, more or less starting. But that is what I said before, is I, I have the feeling that companies tend to roll their own web mapping framework, which is maybe a little bit focused on the skills that the people have. So that is more or less a reason. But we, we don't use GeoNode, we use Shagoon. So that's a simple reason. Any other questions? Uh, if there are no more questions, this was the last presentation in this room for today. Uh, thank you very much for attending. And uh, from uh, 4 o'clock we have the closing ceremony at the National Theatre in the same room where the opening ceremony was. Thank you very much.